Hey, this is Mike. Hey, this is Kaz, and you are listening to Two Broke Watch Knobs. You have made it all the way to episode 274. I was in the middle of drinking a can of water. Water. Hello, Michael. It's okay. Hi. Hello. <laughs> we're we're um, recording. We're recording on new um on a new platform right now. So we're all yeah. very scared. We're very scared. We're trying to be quiet. I just wrapped up some travel. I'm kind of sleepy. You're trying to be quiet. And um, wait, wait, I, 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 I'm trying to be quiet because there's, there's a sleeping baby in my house. I'm fairly certain you don't have a sleeping child in your house. Well, I know that you're trying to be quiet, and I don't know. I can't explain why, but I'm also trying to be quiet because it's but you're you're 1,400 miles away from me, but you got to keep your voice down. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, how's it this going? This is going to be a ton of fun. It's been so long, and I'm just happy to talk to you. First of all, before we even do anything, <laughs> it's, it's good like, to catch up, man. I unplugged for a bit for about a week or so, and it feels weird. It feels weird not texting or chatting. Or is it liberating know? though? It's not liberating. I really? Know. I always, I always like, you know, when like I, I sometimes I leave my phone in my car and Becky be, and my wife be like, oh, you should go get it. I'm like, nah, I like it. I like nah. the feeling. <laughs> yeah. That part, <laughs> like that part is okay. But when it's like people that, I mean, that's fine with my work phone or email um, and all that kind of stuff. But, um, it's funny. My work phone is too old to operate the tools that the company wants me to. And so you I work, can't. You work for a telecommunications company, which I think is fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the stuff that they they want me to have on my phone, my phone is too old for, so I can't get work email <laughs> and things like that. So that's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, man, I love it, man. What episode this is gonna, are we on? This is going to be a ton of fun. We are on episode two hundred and seventy four. Um, it's been a while since we've recorded Michael and I, uh, like Michael said, Michael has been off grid for a uh, social off grid for a little bit. I think Michael and I have also been taking a step back and just reassessing some of the future pieces of two book wash tops to really try to figure out how we can just, um, how we want to proceed forward. The great thing about what we do here at TBW is we've been doing this for a long time. We're older than most other watch podcast that you're going to be, you know, listening to out there. But I think the thing that really makes it special what we do here is it's just, um, it's just two cool dudes talking about watches, not full time. This is not what we do for a full time job. Um, but that also gives us a lot of freedom about what we want to do and how we want to do it. So I think we took a little bit of a step back to have some nice candid conversations about that. So that said, episode 274 of the Two Book Watch House podcast is thusly named. Episode 274, We're Not Dead. Um, I want to talk a little bit about... <laughs> we're not dead. I want to talk a little bit about that. But then also, uh, I, I know we want to talk about your travels because you did something. You maniac. You did something that a lot of watch people fret over when they're getting ready to plan for traveling like oh i need i need a watch for this i need a watch I, I i need an ice cream watch to wear when i'm eating ice cream i need a nice watch in case i have to wear pants one day like people fret you didn't do that i did not do that <laughs> i took i took one watch and i i made a post about that and some some folks were surprised and it was yeah. that was actually liberating that was really cool uh, i could see in that a, in a lot of ways and i you know i started thinking about collecting in general and how I'm I'm going to change things a bit on that front and right. um it's something that I really recommend people try when you're traveling but yeah we'll 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 talk about that we'll talk about that but first we have to honor tradition we're nothing without our traditions michael would you like to do for the 274th time do you want to do an audio wrist check yeah let's uh figure out sharing again on this new platform so i we... Yeah, I have this in. I want to make a video uh, for this watch, actually, probably this this weekend. Um, you know, one of the things we're going to be talking about is doing more video reviews, and that's that's right. a really big learning curve to to get through. Um, you know, we'll we'll talk about what what got posted recently, <clears throat> but today I'm wearing this uh, Forstner A12, which is kind of a funny watch. Um, so Forstner came on the scene um you know again a few years back with right. the uh these reproduction uh vintage bracelets that you know people went nuts for um i had some for an older speedmaster that i had and i forget i think it's called the Comfit. 
Um, and you know, if you want that vintage Speedmaster look, I'm trying really you know, hard not to make a really like gross joke about that. About that yeah, movie. I was thinking about that too. I'm really <laughs> practicing a lot of amazing self restraint right now. But go on. Um, but they, <laughs> they, um, they came out with a watch pretty quietly, also a few years back, called the A12, and the idea was to reproduce um, an accessible version of the Bulova Accutron Astronaut. Mm-hmm. And that's a that's a watch that has a lot of you know cool history with you know CIA test pilots, uh, astronaut types, those cool those kinds of people, yeah. cool people that do cooler stuff than than I do. Um, and <laughs> I so think this you is do cool things. Thank you. So this is just full on great LARPing watch and. Uh, you know they they sent this in to to test out and we'll see a we'll see a video it's just a quartz it's a quartz version of that Bulova Accutron astronaut so some people were initially disappointed when this came out because i don't know if you can see from the the image here but it doesn't have a second hand and so oh yeah so being quartz uh, well, the original had that Accutron movement, so it was the the smooth, like smooth, yeah, tuning tuning fork thing. And I think, in an effort to keep it pretty or pleasing in some way, they didn't want the ticking seconds hand. I'm gonna be honest; I think that's kind of um, that's my least favorite thing about the watch. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I kind of don't like that decision, but uh, yeah, it's so, not my watch. Um. There are a lot of great watches out there that don't have running seconds. Um, mm-hmm. Take some of the Panerai, like the the base Luminor, not the Marina. You know, that, that doesn't have running seconds. That's the first one that comes to mind, some of the radio mirrors. But you know that you're going to wind the watch and, you know, you know you have juice in there. This thing, you kind of just have to hope that it's running. Um, <laughs> you don't, there's no end of life indication. You know, right. a quartz seconds hand will usually do that for you. So I tried to, I tried to get it out of them, you know, asking on, on Instagram, like, Hey, is there, is there a redesign for this, um, in the works? I think maybe not really is, is what I was gathering, right. but that I, otherwise it's, it's a great watch, but I do think that's the weakest point, um, that I can, that I can call out for this watch. Um, is other than that, F, is the F and Forstner the Fender F? I don't know. Can I zoom in here? Let's see. It looks a lot. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this one here that you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, it looks about. a lot like the Fender F. Kind of. Yeah. Uh, kind of. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> but, um, you know, this, I, I like the watch overall. The bracelet on this is, is wild. It's actually yeah. very similar to what um it's very similar to what comes on my new Speedmaster. So you have these polished cool. these little polished links on the inside. Um kind of like what you get with the sapphire sandwich version. Mm-hmm. Um and the quality is just awesome. I like this bracelet way more than the the one with the funny name that <laughs> just, <laughs> I tested out before. Um <laughs> Cool. That, and, I mean, you, you would expect a bracelet to be high quality from a bracelet maker. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, some of those earlier ones, they were kind of quirky. I, I actually think that I got two two of them in for mm-hmm. review way back. I'm sure I talked about it on some podcast episode. Um, the first one that they sent was, I think, defective in some ways. Oh, so they sent... uh, okay. I remember this now, I feel like. Yeah, they sent another one and... Um, but this is, I would recommend this bracelet. I actually don't know what it's called now, but, um, whatever comes on this Forstner A12 is a fantastic bracelet. If, again, if I were to, if I were to do anything with this watch, I would just change the fact that it doesn't have a seconds hand because the ticking doesn't really bother me. Um, do you think it's one of those things where it's like, oh, we don't want to upset people that don't like the quartz watch thing. So we don't even want to show them the ticking. Yeah, that's exactly it. I think that's exactly it. And that's kind of silly. It is kind of silly. 
So that's fine. Though. Otherwise, it's a cool looking watch. I'm uh, sh- sh- show it out, show it on your wrist. I have you. I don't think I saw it. Yeah. Like, are you wearing uh, it right now? Yep. Yes. Oh that's wow. Right. So I'm into it. That's fun. Let's see. Boom. Really that's great cool. size. Great size. Um, it feels super vintagey. Again, I just think that it would be way more practical if they just had a ticking seconds hand. I mean, mm. so I'm sure you have a lot of listeners, a lot of people that like quartz that just, you know, wouldn't care that there is something ticking on the dial. Um, right. It almost reminds me of when Bulova tried to, and at the same time, you're not going to please everybody. I, I I get it. You know, Bulova came out with the, their new version of the astronaut and it has a, uh, I think some kind of Solida GMT movement in there. And, oh, and okay. folks were upset that it was so expensive. It's just, uh, it's a, uh, it's an automatic Swiss movement. You know, it's nothing like the original. So it's, it's a tough watch. If you're going to, if you're going to go into this family of watches to reproduce or reissue, it's tough to please people, I guess, uh, because I don't think, I don't think Bulova, aside from the crazy Accutron line that they have now, that's super expensive. I don't think they're, they're putting those, those high frequency movements on uh... anything else. I could be wrong. Maybe or may, no, I, I I don't know. Off the top of my head, I can't remember. But I think you're right. You you know you have to either there's there's two approaches you can take. You can take the 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 path that's going to upset the least amount of people, or you can just be like, I'm gonna make whatever I want to make, and whatever happens happens. Yeah. you know, with these yeah. watches, and so that's fair. You definitely can't please everyone, but that's but, a cool watch. I'm excited to see your your uh, your review on that. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get that on video and get a get a post up on the site mm-hmm. so, heck yeah what do you have uh i finally got my grand seiko back there it is so my grand seiko uh sbgv 233 matches my wall <laughs> it does i just like the color i, I like this color for my light my light is whack right now do i look weird no you don't look weird no okay i feel like i'm super washed out i want to I want to get some. I want to get your. I, every time you talk about this watch, I, I like to, I like to show the the article that you have. Your go to the Grand Seiko. Oh, oh, the the, the yeah. I lo- I'm so happy with how that photo came out. It's a great photo, right? Oh man, I got man to man to fight my blinds. I'm not doing my normal lighting setup. But yeah, I'm wearing my SPG V two three three. The battery died in this thing a while back. Um, I had the opportunity, and so I was trying to figure out, you know, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to change the battery myself, which, you know, obviously I, I, I can do, or do I want to send it and have like a professional do it? I decided to make the choice of having it sent and had a professional do it just because this is not uh, a typical quartz movement. It's not something uh, that I felt confident in my ability in to not have some sort of unforeseen factor where I screwed something up or anything like that. So um, I made the choice to have an actual professional do it. And so uh and i think i talked about this on air i was in new york um uh god i guess like a like a couple months ago or am i gonna i don't even remember dude oh i was in new york uh uh no it was it was about six weeks ago six weeks ago i was in new york and um the last day you know we were in the the we were in like new york city and so i was like i was like you know what let me just go to the 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 boutique they just opened up the Grand Ticket Boutique, they just opened up New York City. And like, 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 let me drop it off there. Like, there's, 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 there's no other better place for me to go to um, than that place. So I went, uh, uh, hung out there for a minute, dropped it off. Uh, they had to send it out to Japan. I was hoping they could just do it there with, like, the little rubber ball and, you know, just change my battery really quick. But no, that wasn't the case, which is fine. They had to send it out to Japan because then, cause they, cause then they have to do all the water resistance checks and they got to go and give it like a nice little once over and everything like that. So um, the watch was gone for like about a month, maybe four or, or five weeks. And so happy to have it back. Um, I think if I do have to send it back to Seiko, I probably won't do it through the boutique. Um, I might find another way of getting it there. Just, um, I don't want to go too much into it, but um, it wasn't it, it wasn't as smooth or as pleasant as of a process I would as I would have expected. Um, kind of having my watch sent uh, 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 sent to Japan through the the the, the American based Grand Seiko boutique here, so um, 
I think just some communication issues and just some logistical stuff. And it just seems like maybe some things are still kind of getting spun up in terms of the customer experience, if that makes sense. Did you, did they, did they give you a reason as to why it had to go to Japan? Um, for just for something as simple as a battery change is it equipment they didn't have they... the capabilities they said that they just they just didn't have the capabilities of doing any, any of that stuff here do they service is... watches at all at that location because i thought that was part of the the grand opening they had a maybe uh... by service watches they mean change the bracelet size like <laughs> size your bracelet yeah that's a that's a because wasn't one. wasn't there wasn't there, wasn't there a seiko like factory in not factory a seiko service center in like jersey where like Seiko Prospects and like Seiko Fives would go there for servicing. Do you remember That's, that? Or am I... That sounds familiar. You you might right? be right, but yeah, I guess it's not Grand Seiko. It's just funny because this <laughs> makes me think of that that Zin the um, gosh With the oil. It? Yeah, the oil filled one that I was mm -hmm. kind of loving on for a little bit, and yeah. you know, a story like this that watch has to go back to Germany when you want to do a battery change, but that at the very least you know, they, they change the oil, they refill it, they do all the crazy pressure testing again. So it's, it's a, a little very, bit, it, yeah, little it's a much more technical service. I mean, like you, you, they got to put like the submarine oil in there and they got to like go and do all, I don't know what's in there, but like, yeah. this is just a, it's just a battery change and it was a water pressure test. They didn't, they didn't even like clean the watch. Like they didn't like polish it or wasn't, anything. It wasn't anything intense, you know? Yeah. Um, a bit of a 180 from when I had uh, my Omega serviced through Mayers sent to Omega. That was a wonderful experience. My watch came back beautiful. It came back in a nice, I don't have it here, beautiful box. I got mm -hmm. my Grand Seiko back in like one of those like $1 sunglass cases. <laughs> well, that kind of looks like the red Omega one that you get. So your Omega came with a box? Yeah, I came back in a baller ass box. Let me find it. One second. I should have. I should have prepared better. One minute. That's that's funny because I think there's a there's a pretty characteristic Omega little case like that. It's it's red and I don't know. It looks very that's similar to the Grand Seiko one. Ah oh, man. Let's see it. Oh, I like. Okay, I'm just I'm staring back. at your guitar now. I'm back. I promise. Okay. Fuck. I hope you enjoyed looking at the back of my wall. Came back in this. That's really cool. This thing is fucking rad, dude. That's sweet. Right? This thing is awesome. Yeah. Which of these is cooler to you? <laughs> yeah, that little that little Omega one, there's something um, in the new Speedmaster box that they shrank a little bit. It comes mm -hmm. with a, a travel type case like that. It's just black. Um, oh, okay. No, I, that's, I love this thing. Did you get any paperwork um, with the Omega when it came back? Like, uh, Yes. They gave me paperwork, what was done, what was switched out, receipts, and they gave me all the old parts. So they had to swap out like the bezel as well and had to do a new crown. They gave me all the old parts they, they took out. Oh, so you have a new bezel hmm? with a new insert. No, no, the bezel, oh, sorry, the bezel is the same. The spring, they had to change the, the spring. Oh, that's okay. what it was cool cool uh i have to find it the little i got the actually it might be right here i can't prepare yeah okay so here's what here's what's happening this is all the stuff from mayors so i got oh and the hands they swapped out they had to swap out the hands and omega uh gave me my old my old hands wow how cool is that that is pretty cool i got my old clasps because this one was broken uh, got some gasket rings, got my old crown. It's so funny because this is like, you know, technically trash, but I'm just like, look, guys, my bezel gasket. <laughs> you know? Oh, man, that's funny. <laughs> but no, totally. So that's what I was saying in regards to like communication and like the customer service experience. It, I, 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 I'll, I'll probably figure out some other way if I have to get a Grand Seiko service again. I'll, I'll probably figure out some other way to get it to Japan. You could try them all also. Just go to the watch station kiosk. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm how I figure it out. That's how I scratched the back of an old CWC. Just a big, <laughs> big gash, man. Oh, did he did he hit it with the hammer? I don't know what he did, but it I was kind of pissed about that. But I, mean, you know, you I don't have, I don't have that watch anymore. How cool is this dude? Come on now. 
It's almost like a but little yeah. display case. That's 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 from that's from. I, I think I'm gonna like try to figure out a way to like display it like somewhere in my office with like the watch in it. It's really cool. Sorry. Nice. Yeah. So the, the, my watch is fine. It's just it's literally just the 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 communication and a little bit of like the uh, the experience I had trying to get my watch back. If that makes sense. I don't want to go too much into those specific details, but it wasn't a very easy process to figure out how to get my watch back. So well, I'm glad you have both your watches back. I What's, feel whole again. What is this what thing? is next? Yeah, after I'm glad that I didn't break it. That's now I <laughs> you can... were so worried you broke it. <laughs> it's just I mean, dude, come on. After <laughs> after a certain point, you have to wonder if you're cursed or something. So no, I'm glad it's never, never on your wrist and working again. Heck yeah! But what were you? What were you gonna ask? I was gonna ask what what is next because that's something that I'm thinking about too. Uh, a lot of watches that I have have to be, I guess, you know, if you follow the rules, um, uh, some of my watches have to be serviced soon. So uh, the the Doxa especially and the um, the Panerai. The Panerai is probably gonna be the one that goes next because I want to mm. I want to get it serviced while it's still under warranty. And then I want to bead blast the crap out of that case. Oh, that's right. That'll be super cool. I feel like if they get a, a bead blasted case in for service, they'll be like, no, we can't do this for you. We're, we're not going to service your San Martin for you. It's like, no, 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 please. You have to believe me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think San Martin makes a Panerai clone. Um, that's really funny, though. Uh, what, uh, in terms of servicing, I don't know, actually. Um, there's watches that probably, in terms of their timeline, should get serviced but i don't feel if i like i have i don't feel a need to have them serviced if that makes sense you know um i I mean i'm i I do not know the service history of my raketo big zero i don't think any living human on earth knows the service history of my raketo big zero um (laughs) same with the slava medical i could have my seiko snk service but like yeah it's fine you know how is that how is that thing running by the way accuracy wise uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't really. Plus, plus minus forty five minutes a day. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't like looked hardcore. I still, it still runs. It still runs. It, it's still running. Um, but yeah, in terms of servicing, um, it's uh, maybe the Manta in like two years. Nice. Yeah. Well, you know? they'll 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 set you up nice because they they seem to have really really good customer service. So yeah. But that's it's amazing awesome, how man. far that goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm glad. Yeah, but I'm, I'm glad happy. That back. Yeah, I'm happy to have this thing back. I feel. I feel like. I feel like me again. It was. I. I, I love my my Omega and I love my the the Manta, but like this thing, this thing in particular. I don't know. This is it for me. I love this watch. It's like a. It's like an elevated version of the Christmas Chrono. It's. it's yeah. Like an evolution in in your yeah. collecting. Just all different shades of teal and green. Speaking yeah. of which, I'm having dark thoughts. I'm looking at the Nomos Club Sport, um, this petrol dial. Have you seen that? No. Sport, Club Sport Neomatic Petrol. If you Google that, you'll find it. Let's see. I'm having let's dark look, thoughts. Let's look together. Is it a new? Because I know they came out with... Um, I think it's like a year or two old. It's new-ish. So it's the club? Yeah. Oh wow! You just went to like the Nomos website. You, you, you could have just Googled it, uh, but let's find it here. Um, scroll down. It's on a bracelet. You'll know when you see it. Yep, first one. Oh, this one right here. Hmm. That looks snazzy. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it looks pretty sweet. I don't know. It's fun. How big are these? Let's see. This is 37 millimeters. 37? Mm-hmm. I can see you wearing this. Yeah. It looks pretty cool. So, having dark thoughts. 8 millimeters thick, 47 lug to lug. That'd be nice. Yeah, the club is still my favorite Nomos. Even mm-hmm. just just the, the plain, the 36 millimeter one that they recently yep. refreshed. So, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But um, solid wrist check, man. It's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> Feels good. Feels good. 
Uh, I'm telling you. Let's do this. Um, this would normally be the section of the show, show where we talk about like housekeeping, what's on the site, and everything like that. Um, what I will share is this. In order to keep the episode, this is one of those things we talked in the beginning of the show, like how Michael and I want to try to just like figure out this next phase, this next sort of future iteration of Two Book Watching Ups. In order to make this... Uh, uh, in order to make the episodes a little more streamlined, we're going to be foregoing or greatly reducing the housekeeping section and really keeping all of those pieces on the newsletter. So if you'd like to hear and just get updates directly to your inbox about what's happening on the website and what's happening on the YouTube channel, which we will talk about more, um, definitely go and sign up for the newsletter. Sorry, I just found I just found uh, a piece that I forgot to put back on my, my little Omega bag. Um, Go and check out the newsletter. It's on the homepage. You can also you'll also get asked to uh, sign up for it when you're just on the website, tuberwashknobs.com, and you will get all updates about what we're doing on the website there. But what I will say is definitely go and check out the YouTube because Michael CWC Sea Falcon review is up there. And it's very cool. Yeah, that was um we can we can start talking about that. YouTube is just it's one of those monstrous, really intimidating things that mm -hmm. I've I think I've been a little skittish in trying to wrap my head around it and dive into it. I think you, you did a great job just, you know, diving in there and it's so easy to, especially for me to overanalyze, um, getting into something. I think I was the same way when it came to watch photography because, right. you know, this podcast started, well, the podcast was a thing. But we were we were really heavy on Instagram at first, like getting mm -hmm. the photo up for the day was like the big deal, you know, spent and, hours doing that every day. <laughs> and we never really shot watches before. Mm. Um, but I was just like, what, what do I need? Do I need this crazy camera with these lenses and all, all, all this stuff like that? Props, and, so props, <laughs> props, you know, and, and, and there are there are creators that that do that stuff really, really well. And, you know, I think, I think you and I both do a decent job uh, when it comes to watch photography, but um, video is just this, this new thing that is, I mean, for me, I, I find it really scary, but it's scary are, shit, yeah. but there are, um, you know, I can pull this up. Uh, I did a, a video review and a it's quick a little write up, photo, by the way, thank you of this watch. And I, I chose this one because you know, before, before my trip, I, uh, I was just really wearing the heck out of this thing. This is a watch that is just tough to get off, off wrist. It's so easy wearing. It's so capable. Uh, you know, it does. I, I love the combination of the time zone bezel, but you don't lose elapsed time tracking if you want it. So you just have a mm. simple quartz chronograph. It's like, bread and butter tbws you know <laughs> and this is I, I had these thoughts of the the 10 watch box and and what i was going to do i was thinking about getting a um a mark ii paradigm this year i was also looking at the new sangin kinetic titanium that might be coming out soon mm. and then i got this in and i'm like that kind of satisfies this satisfies way more in my eyes. So this is like, this is in the watch box next to the Doxa, next to the Speedmaster, and I love it, man. It's it's just it's one of the it's one of the better things that they've they've come out with recently. And uh, you know, as a brand that's so focused on these very accurate reissues, I've had a lot of them. I still have yeah. the, um, you know, I still have the. Uh, Oh yeah. The eighties, the eighties diver here, which I, I put it next to in, in this video. Um, highly recommend this watch. I, I, some, some people thought it was a little too crowded when it first came out. There's a lot going on between this dial and that bezel, but dude, this thing is, this thing is great. And it was, it was cool getting a video done for it. It was a learning experience. And again, I just, you know, we talk about people like just watches and, and, random rob that just you know they fire up the cell phone and they you know they get get videos out and that's just something well, no, that i, I know just like, watches dude. just watches does a lot of prep work and scripting and and he's yeah. got like 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 cuts and like different scenes and things like that i'm very much in the school of let's just push the button and yeah. say words and keep talking until the video is just sort of eventually over that's why my videos are like a half hour long 
because I could just do that for a long time, apparently. But I, I, I always make the analogy to how we started the podcast. Like you and I fretted for a long time at the beginning of the of uh, recording the podcast about like equipment and like what talk about and like that kind of stuff. And then eventually just boiled down to like, let's just, let's just fucking do it. Let's just, let's just do it and figure it out. Let's in the the worst case possible, or I guess the worst analogy possible, let's build the plane while it's flying. Let's just, we'll just figure out how to put it together (laughs) while it's in the air. One of my favorite corporate analogies. Yeah. (laughs) Damn, that's good. So no, I'm, I'm stoked. Everyone go and check out the YouTube, check out Mike's review. So, so we have made it to the main topic of the portion, according to my notes. Do you want to talk about future TBWS stuff, or do you want to talk about your trip? We'll talk about the trip real quick. It was, um, so I, uh, yeah, let's talk about that because, um, that was, that was something cool that I, I just, I didn't think I was going to have a lot of watch experiences on this trip. You know, I, I, nothing will ever top the dude that I met on a, on a ferry that one time, you know, Oh, the guy with the docks. So right. Yeah. Going over to Bremerton and him saying, Oh, is that a U.S. divers co doxa? And that, that's, that's like the most specific question. Your response was, are you single? (laughs) Pretty much. Yeah. (laughs) Pretty much. Are you, are you looking for companionship, sir? Yeah. Yeah. So nothing, (laughs) nothing will ever top that. But, um, this past week, uh, wife and I went over to no, just not far. We, we wanted to take a trip for the, uh, the 10 year wedding anniversary. Congratulations. And again. Thank you. Heck yeah. Double thank digits. You. And, uh, we decided to check out Newburgh, Oregon, which is kind of that, that area, the Willamette Valley, they call it is, uh, almost like a Napa Valley equivalent for the state of Oregon. And so, you know, we just, we got a, a house there for a week and, you know, did some, some awesome like tours of vineyards and wineries and all that kind of stuff and ate some great food. It was, I feel very recharged and very sad to go back to work on Monday. (laughs) But (laughs) for the experience, when I was packing, you know, I, I was going through the motions of, Oh, I'll take this one and this one and I'll make a memory with the docs and I'll, you know, but I had the, um, I had the Speedmaster on when I was, you know, packing and I just thought to myself, "Eh, I'm just going to take this. You know. Just keep, just keep that one on. Yeah. So I made a, I made a post about that on Instagram. Some people were surprised and I highly recommend trying that out. If you're going to, if you're going to go for a trip, um, try to simplify. And I got to spend some real time with that watch. I got to appreciate it a bit more. It's, um, it's still very new in the collection. That one, that one specifically. Um, but I just, I don't even know if I want to buy anything else for the rest of the year. Um, sure. That's, that's the kind of watch that you could really just wear every, every single day. And something funny that happened, we, um, we went out to lunch at some random, like, you know, family run restaurant. And as I, as I walked in, I noticed that there were, you know, there was a little display case with some wedding photos and action figures, little model cars, Legos, and um, uh, a ton of Gundam type models that cool. you would build and stuff. Oh, yeah. and I, was, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. There's somebody, this is a, this is a restaurant that somebody runs and is almost like an extension of themselves. Heck yeah. And we sat down to eat. The food was really good. And somebody came over to, uh, you know, top off our waters or something. And he, uh, he looked at the Speedmaster and he, he just said like, Oh, that's a, that's a really cool. I think he said, that's a, that's a very historic watch or legendary watch or something like that. And I said, Oh, thank you. You know, that's, um, you just made my day. <laughs> yeah. You just made my day. Like in front of, in front of the wife too. And like, look, baby, this is like a real world. People are this crazy <laughs> about this stuff. I promise we're real people. Yeah. So, um, you know, he was, he was asking me about the Speedmaster. He's like, Oh, did you, did you get the Hesalite one? Did you get the Sapphire? I said Sapphire. And he's like, Oh, the cool thing about the Sapphire one is that it has the, oh my God. the display case back. And I took it off. I'm like, yeah, look at this. This is great. Um, and then he was, te- I think he started, you know, he, he left to do something else, but he's like, I'll be, I'll be back. And I'm I'll like, be Oh, back. okay, whatever. That's cool. So he, back. 
he came he came back and he came with a uh with a a red omega case kind of just like um looks very similar to your your grand seiko one and he pulled out the uh the new white version of the the speedmaster that so uh, wild i think people call it the daniel craig or something because he was the omega oh, used the, him yeah to tease it at, at at some events and stuff so i i wasn't expecting to like that watch i never i never sought out to to find one or compare but dude it is schnazzy and it's it's, it's beautiful uh, eh? wow i can maybe in a different life i would have both but um i still like the black i think the black is still my favorite of course. uh Funny thing, you know, we we were talking about this. He said he had this white one. He said he had an older, I think maybe a 3570 with the 1861 movement. And I told him, hey, you know, all you need now is to, uh, you know, get the Ed White with uh, the new caliber 321. He said, yeah, I have that in my safe. So, <laughs> which is which is the baller ass response. Yeah, it was it was so it was so so cool, and I'm like, wow, dude, this this guy loves Omega, and he was also talking about uh, how Omega collecting is so huge in Thailand. Um, oh, it was interesting. A, it was a Thai restaurant, and he, we were talking about the piece that Cole did for Hodinki a while back, where he he met up with a huge Seiko collector in Thailand and a huge uh, Omega collector that basically oh. the guy turned. I think he turned his whole living room or something into an, a, an Omega museum. So there's a, I guess, you know, there are parts of the world where Omega is really, really big. I think mm. UK, uh, I think the Netherlands for sure. And apparently Thailand. So th this was just a dude that loves Omega and it was a real treat to again, have a, have a watch collecting interaction in the wild. So yeah. that doesn't, doesn't happen a lot, but I guess I feel like it no. happens to me a lot. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it's ever happened to me. Not in the way you're describing. Like, like it'll happen if I'm at, like the times I've been at, like wind up, but that's different. Like, yeah. There's, there's, there's you're, you're, you're all concentrated in one space. You were just yeah. having, uh, you're having, you were having a fine meal and someone, someone made the, someone, someone said, I love you first. Someone made the yeah. first move. And that was, that was that was just one of the cool watches that I saw. I, um, on one of the tours that we took, I saw an older gentleman with a, it looked to be a Rolex date, just very old, but at six o'clock it had some kind of company emblem on it. So oh, cool. One of the old it wasn't the, dominoes. it wasn't the Domino's one or like, I think I've seen Publix ones. Um, Publix but Domino's it, ones and like, yeah. Cause like, it's something you can do. Like, I guess you can, or like, used not, to be able not to anymore. Do. Yeah. Oh, Rolex Rolex will laugh in your face if you want to do that today. <laughs> Can we get a two book watch knobs day just? Yeah, yeah. So that that was kind of <laughs> cool. It, you know, it's nice to see that on an older guy. It makes you wonder like, hey, did he work somewhere for you know 30 years and then he on the last day you get the Rolex with the company it's, company it's logo the story. on it. Like watch most watch collectors, whether or not they maybe realize or rationalize it this way, they're romantic at heart. Like they love the idea of this this story. Whether the story is like, oh, that person clearly dove with that watch, or like, oh, that clearly is someone's like retirement watch. Like everyone just, I, I, I think more often than not, people fall in love with that. That's why all this the dive reissue stuff caught on fire. Like people just love history and stuff like that behind me. So that's cool. You saw one in the wild though, just a random company logo. They just, yeah, and. Uh had another little experience that I'll, I'll talk about quickly. I, um, we, we got an itch this time to play board games. Well, my wife did. I didn't, she's way more into board games. I kind of, she wanted to play board games and you were in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like board games? <sighs> yes. And I want to play more of them. It's just a bit difficult right now with a one-year-old. Cause yeah. uh, he just turns everything over and tries to put stuff in his mouth. Like just like game pieces and shit. <laughs> Um, yeah, but no, we do. When when you were here, we played um, the Haunted Mansion version of Life. I don't know if you that's, remember. That's right. Okay, so this is a little tangent. How yeah, complex man. do you like your your board games? Because sometimes I feel like I'll go over to somebody's house and 
they say like, Hey, I got this board game. It's a adventure, whatever thing. And we spend an hour reading the rules and yeah. there needs to be a fit. I, I was never a, a Dungeons and Dragons type guy. So that's, that's one where you need like a, a narrator for it. Somebody, you know, I like board games where you can learn as you're playing or get a quick rundown or the game is designed for you to pick it up as you're going. Like I know those games where like you go and you have to read, you have to read the book and you got to go through all the rules. You got to understand like the calculations and you got, and it's just like, dude, I just want to play. Like, yeah. just like this is, but for some reason, for, 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 for some people, all of those rules and all that crap, that's part of the game. Like they like that stuff. Yeah, I guess so. Did you have well, to do just... that this week? We just got Uno, Monopoly, and Sorry. I think <laughs> was right. what we. Yeah, so we went. We went to a a Fred Meyer, which I'm. You know, you and I grew up with. We're, we're Publix guys. You and I. Yeah. We're what the fuck's a Fred Meyer. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of, it's kind of like a roided out Publix, but it has clothing and it has a a, a jewelry section where they sell watches. So are you describing a Walmart? It's kind of like, maybe it's more like a Walmart than Publix. Okay. But, but it's it's your grocer sort of just mega store also. Yeah, yeah, the whatever we have here. So, they have a jewelry section with, you know, they had, they had watches from Bulova Citizen and I saw a Citizen that I really liked. I know I said oh. I wasn't going to buy anything for the rest of the year, but if I were to. This, <laughs> this is a real sickness, but I saw, let me see if I can pull up a, uh, some shots of it. It is the Citizen Fugu Diver, I think they call this oh, series. Yeah. Those things were fun. So this is a... <clears throat> is it the all loom dial? It's blacked out and it has a full loom dial. That's cool. This is very you. I know. <laughs> So seeing seeing this thing in person was really really cool. I I I don't think I've seen any of the newer, um, the newer Citizen automatics uh, that started coming out. This this NY series before they started making a ton of the new versions, you had to get them from out of the country a lot of times or just take right. a take a risk on eBay. But they started pushing these a little bit harder, and this is. I think it's oh yeah the NY zero one five five dash five eight X, very cool. Um, I think not, it's something. I'm not like, into the automatics. I don't like that. I feel I feel very dissociated from Citizen every time they like make a big deal about an automatic thing they're doing. They're like, yeah, I'm really just want to hear about Eco Drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that's the one thing that would make this watch better. You know, is is the is the oh wait so so this is automatic it's not it's not one of the eco drive it's not ones. one of the eco drives yeah oh yeah it should be eco drive yeah that's that's the one thing that i'd change honestly and yeah. but it's such a cool look that case is apparently it says 44 millimeters but i tried it, it on doesn't it look does, like it yeah it it it, it doesn't with wear the crown way. yeah maybe with the crown and i think sometimes their their measurements are are kind of strange uh i, th I think the the ProMaster diver that you got me. I don't, I don't know what they advertise for the size, but I think it's 42 or 43 or something. It feels like a 40. That watch feels like a 40 and it's mm. super, super slim. This, this wears more like a, maybe a 42, honestly. You know, I, 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 I go back and forth with like capping what I buy or being very structured about what I buy, you know, for, for, you and I have always done that for, for, for any, for any OG TVWS folk, you've heard Michael and I go through, I think possibly all the different stages of like, of like watch collecting psychosis. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, I want, I just want, I want my three or I want my six or I'm not going to control it. I want this. I don't care about, I wanted, I think I'm at the point right now where if I could use another metaphor, I'm just going to let my lawn do whatever it wants to do. I'm just going to let it grow however it wants to grow as long as it doesn't put me in financial ruin. The HOA might have something to say about that. Fuckers. Goddamn <laughs> HOA pieces of garbage. Ah, sorry. I'm having HOA issues here right now. You're cutting deep. But like, but there's, okay, so my backyard, my backyard, my HOA has no fucking say in my backyard. I'm yeah. going to let my backyard do whatever the fuck it wants to do. I'm going to let it grow however it wants to grow. Because um, I don't, I don't know. 
Well, I guess it gets more. What is watch collecting? You know what I mean? Like is watch collecting the, meti- the, the, the meticulous catering of a catalog or a suite of watches? Is it, you know, something more personal where you appreciate by consumption, which no- there's nothing wrong with, like this idea of, of acquisition and ownership. Like there's some people who I would absolutely constitute as collectors and they have hundreds of watches. And yeah. then there's some folks who don't have hundreds of watches now, I'd still absolutely call them collectors, you know? So I, 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 I I don't think I'm gonna I'm gonna try to control it anymore. I'm gonna obviously make sure I don't put my my family into financial ruin. If I was just a, if I was just a dude walking around like without a family or whatever, yeah, I would go fucking nuts and I would be like homeless, <laughs> like sleeping in my car full of watches, which does sound pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. Um, has air conditioning? You got a moonroof? Fucking yeah, it'd hashtag, be awesome in that. Hashtag van life with watches. <laughs> That's a the van life thing is kind of crazy up here, you know. I imagine I imagine it's getting it's 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 still it's still re- really much a thing there, right? Oh my gosh, people will say, yeah, you know, I'm just I'm just gonna simplify my life and you know buy a six figure Sprinter van with all these different <laughs> you know bells and bells and whistles, and uh, you know if if I were to do that, it would probably be half it would have to be in the Honda Fit actually. So I'd have my Honda Fit from twenty late twenty twelve. I just picture you sleeping in your fit with your knees against your chest with like a suitcase just surrounded by watches. Yeah. Yeah. That that sounds yeah, in a in a in a world where I where I'm not, you know, if I wasn't if I wasn't married, that could we happen. Could, you could be my roommate in the Santa Fe. I we got I got room in the Santa Fe. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. we can just we can use some some like styrofoam or something to make little rooms in there. Yeah, that we'll get a work. curtain. I'll just get a curtain with like the little the little pulley like on a chain or whatever. Yeah, it'll, it'll be it'll be fucking awesome, dude. That's we perfect. Sp- split split chores, split rent, split chores. <laughs> which is just gas. <laughs> <laughs> gas, and then opening the windows to get a light breeze through the car every now and then, just to get the musk out. You know what I mean? Oh man, I'm telling you, dude. But no, I I I don't think I'm gonna try to control it anymore. I'm gonna. Collect in a way that I think, and I'm trying to explore what this means to me as a collector. I'm going to collect in a way I think I want to collect, obviously not making irresponsible purchases um, and just uh, and just see what happens, you know? Yeah. One thing that I got out of that I'm grateful for is the idea that I have to uh, break into a new price bracket. That's I think that's the most uh, toxic. That's so, that's so real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, you, you I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of how I, that mentality lost me the, uh, the sub, like the, the early two thousands five digit, you know, I was like, Oh, I got this one. Now I need to sell it and then get the Batman or something, get something else. Like you have to, that's how you evolve as a collector. So I'm glad that I don't think that way anymore. That, and it's like, it's like a, uh, uh, it's like a one way, like flow. Some people think once you go into that next price bracket, you you can't ever go back because like every now and then they'll hear someone say like oh man once once you handle an omega dude you you'll never go back like watches yeah. whenever and like i think people that's super toxic by the way when people say that i think people hear that and they're just like oh yeah no that's you know that's totally true i i i can never you know buy a, a couple hundred dollar seiko ever again now that i own i don't know a sub or whatever you know what i mean yeah. i just i think that that goes to uh, a comment that you and I used to make all the time where, you know, one can make the argument that you are no longer a watch collector. You're a wealth enthusiast, yeah. which is fine. <clears throat> you're just not a watch collector. <laughs> you know, you I kind of miss that makes me I the wealth enthusiast thing. Yeah, you have to be aware of that. I do miss. Have you seen a decrease? So in social watch collecting social media. I've seen a decrease in the number of photos with the stylish anal beads bracelets <laughs> that we used to we used to well, call we, out. We we can't trust the reality that we get from social media because the algorithm is based on things we give it signals for. So I don't know how many likes you gave to skull bead bracelet anal bead bracelet fo- uh, photos. Yeah. I haven't been so I because I can only I only judge social media on what our Instagram feed is showing us. So like, no, I'm not seeing a lot of those photos on our feed, but we also generally don't engage with those photos. Yeah. 
That's true. You know what I mean? So maybe I, I don't know. Maybe they're that, still that out there. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I still remember the someone lighting a cigar on like the Aventador exhaust flame and they're wearing like a Rolex or whatever. I don't know what the fuck. Like, yeah, that stuff probably still exists. Maybe now it's just with cyber trucks or whatever. I don't know. You know, I saw a couple cyber trucks on the trip, by the way. Someone that, in my neighborhood has one. That thing. It's pretty ugly. It's quite hideous looking, which is fine. If people want to buy something ugly, that's cool. Rock and roll, man. Um, it's, uh, it looks like something that maybe didn't have, um, you know, there's a really, there's a really crucial part of the creative process, whether you're creating cars or whether you're creating like art or whether you're creating like, even like a, like a film projection, there's a really integral part of the creative process where it's, it's, you know, round table editing like people having discussions about this thing going out there and what the what the, the Cybertruck currently looks like now is what would happen if that editing process did not exist. Hmm. You know what I mean? I feel like enough people maybe didn't talk about what the final goal or vision was supposed to be for that thing, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I'm not a car safety expert, but it looks like a death trap, probably. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> i'm not yeah. gonna get one that's all i'll say no no <laughs> well cyber but trucks I'm glad, aside i'm glad you had a good time i'm glad uh i'm glad you had an amazing watch experience in the wild yeah i'm hoping i have one one day where's my where's my prince charming you know what i mean one day he will one day he'll be here one day he will come and he'll have a very nice conversation with me about, about watches it um, could just be me i could fly over there and I know you already. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if you just flew here and knocked on my door and be like, oh, hey, uh, is that your car? Pro- oh, hey, great, great Seiko. Like, hey, Mike, I know what you're doing, dude. I, it's fine. I don't it, It's kind of like sleazy role play if you want to get into that with me. <laughs> I can just like, I meet you at a bar, pretend I don't know you. Yeah. We watch date. That would be I can hilarious. Help you with, I can help you with that fantasy. Maybe we it can is film ni- it. It is 97 degrees here right now. I don't know how badly you want to be in Florida. Dude, it's <laughs> it's gonna be seventy eight today, and I'm dreading. That sounds it. that sounds lovely. Yeah, but we don't have AC here, so it's. I really it, keep forgetting you don't have air conditioning. Yeah, yeah. So we have to close all the just, blinds. And just do, do all just this. do what Homer did. Get a tent, put it in front of your fridge, open the fridge door, and just have all the cold air from the fridge collect in the tent, and then just sit in the tent. My favorite technique will always be freezing wet t-shirts sticking wet t-shirts in the freezer and then pulling them out and wearing them that's what i did one year when we had a heat wave here Uh, okay i mean wouldn't that be unpleasant at a certain point like it's unpleasant for (laughs) maybe five it's terrible (laughs) it's unpleasant for maybe five seconds but afterwards once once you crunch out all of the (laughs) the the film of ice on the shirt it's it's actually quite nice so i would do one for me and one for the dog okay good to know yeah, yeah my thermostat was saying like 97 feels like 116 because like we're going through like a little bit of like some and we have like a, a drought situation right now here i'm on, I'm on the gulf coast of um of florida so uh, but we're supposed to be getting 10 inches next week 10 10 hot steaming inches next week so let's wow. let's see let's see what happens good luck because we could we could use it right now but um no i'm glad do you want to talk about tbws stuff do you want to talk about like just a lot of the stuff that's on your and my minds and then maybe what folks can expect from things moving forward and um i i also just i i just i just want to talk about i just want to talk about where my head's at yeah as well let's do it let's do it i think it's been we're coming up on eight years man right we are coming up yeah september september we we started this oh we were so young we started this crazy journey september 2016 Mm -hmm. good lord yeah holy shit you you weren't joking eight years yeah so things are gonna things are gonna change i think we had again the whole our whole world at the time was podcast and instagram i think for Mm -hmm. a while for a while we didn't have a website you know and then naturally when you make a website you think okay we're gonna exist the same way that 
um, a blog to watch does or Hodinkee or something like that. We're just going to, it's going to be that, but we're going to be doing it. And I think that's the way the site existed for a long time. The podcast, uh, I still consider flagship for us. Yeah. And, um, but we, I think with just life in general and trying to do things our way, we neglected a lot of different, you know, content creation avenues that we could have, you know, taken advantage of. And, you know, one of those is, is YouTube. And I, I think, like I said before, it's, it's a scary thing to get into and podcasting has changed drastically also between then and now. I think when we started the video component of a podcast was not something that people expected. And yeah. it's, it's almost like a requirement these days. People want the, the vodcast or I, I don't know what the word is. Is that really what it's called? I think people say that I definitely didn't make it up, but I want to go, I want to look it up, man. But that's, that's part of the reason, you know, we're doing this, we're testing different platforms and trying to get video and visual aids. And from what I can tell people, appreciate that um when we do get episodes out but that's i think at the core it still has to be just two two guys talking about watches and it's frustrating to me that people will start podcasts today because they're you know shit talking with each other and in a basement somewhere and they're like, Oh, this would be so funny to be a podcast. So like everybody has a podcast yeah. where, you know, you might have to wonder, Oh, you're, you're not actually that interesting. So I, I'm glad that we still do it. I, I just really hope that at the core, it serves as a, I guess you could call a, a nice break from the rest of the watch content that you can get these days, especially on YouTube. Some of the stuff that is out there is so much regurgitation of yes. press yeah. releases still. You were saying, yeah, this is awesome all the time, always. I hate uh, that shit, dude. It's <laughs> tough. It's tough to find, you know, candid. Disc and I, I think some people do it well. Some people try to actually, I won't name channels, but some big YouTube channels that are like watch world personalities have tried this and they've, they've shut it off because mm. it, for some reason or another, didn't work for them. And you I'm, I'm just glad that, that this is at our core, you know, you said something really interesting when we first, uh, you know, when we first started and when we didn't have the website, when we started talking about the website, you know, when most people are, are in that early growth stage, like we were, uh, way back then, you know, start a website and there's all these other websites, you know, there's a uh, blog to watch the uh, uh, Hodinkee, you know, um, some of the other ones. And the first thought is like, oh, yeah, we're just going to do a website. We're going to do like that website. Like what they're yeah. doing is what this was. So it's going to be you know, press releases, reviews, you know, X, Y, Z, so on and so forth. And I think when you do something like that, you're following the formula because you think that's what that's what a watch website is supposed to do. That's what a watch content producer is is supposed to do. And so I think what you and I have been trying to figure out is, you know, we want the website, we want to do YouTube. And exactly to your point, like we also just want it to still feel like us. But then we get into the really interesting thing of how do you do something that no one's ever done before? Because it's really what we're talking about. We're not talking about, you know, copy and paste. That's why you get like a dime a dozen youtube channels where they're all sort of the same not doing so doing something that maybe hasn't been done before in the way you want is incredibly challenging but it also is a really good opportunity to figure out like what actually makes us different what makes us special what do we want to put out there that i think will have a great lasting impression one of the things that i've been really trying to like keep in mind for me that I think has always been sewn into the ethos of what we do on Tuberk Watch Knobs is that Tuberk Watch Knobs is not going to be one of those websites that makes you feel good about a decision you've already made. And to clarify that, you know, let's see. So let's use, let's use my example with this Nomos uh, Club Neomatic Petrol dial. Uh, I saw that watch. I read the specs. I looked at some photos. Uh, I made the decision that I love that watch. That, that situation I explained happens to a lot of people, but then, you know, maybe they want to go and find some other opinions. 
I don't think you want to find other opinions. I think you want to find opinions that agree with you so you feel better about the decision you've already made. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want a website that does that. Like, I want a website that might actually challenge you on a decision you made based off of the reality of a watch. Because at the end of the day, even though, Mike, you and I are putting ourselves in a position to, you know, have brand relationships and have, like, brand sponsorships and things like that, we're not one of those websites that, that, that we created to make brands happy. Like brand brands are not going to be the reason we're still here. That's where a lot of, of watch websites kind of like fall and crash. They make, they, 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 they do the copy and paste of other websites and they say like, Oh, as soon as brand sponsorships come in, like we'll be great. And then when they don't come in, your business plan sucks and it just kind of dissolves to nothing. And yeah. You have, nothing you have to start, you have to start selling watches. You gotta yeah. start, gotta start selling watches. So I, I think, I, I think because you and I have structured us, structured ourselves to operate very differently, and we've structured TBWS in a way to generate revenue for ourselves that is not dependent on brands liking us. It actually allows us to, to speak authentically about things we, we feel are important for people to know about the watch decisions. And so this is where the video component comes into play. I think the video component on YouTube will allow us to take those perspectives even further. So that's why the the, the, the few watch reviews I have uh, on YouTube, that's why they're so goddamn long. First of all, because I can't stop talking. But like second of all, because for the most part, if I'm reviewing a watch, I've been wearing it for like a week plus it's not like I got it in, threw it on, been like, uh, yeah, rock and roll. Okay, got the bullet points from the website. Check, check, let's do it. Record. Hey, you, you know what I mean? So yeah. it, I'm very excited for the video component because of that. That's why I'm, I'm not too cut up about like the technology part. I think this is where also you and I are very much like a yin and yang situation. Um, I'm going hit, to hit the button and just kind of go. Once I figured out how to do two screens at once, I was like, perfect, I can do it. We're good. That's all I need. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've been, I went hard on just like, oh, if we do this, it's gotta, it's gotta look like all these other channels. So that's, that's where I because, get heavy into like gear and stuff and technique and all. Because all what's normal with a lot of these watch channels and is, be, is their content or the ethos of what they're saying sucks, but the production quality is super good. Yeah. And so people might think it's good. Like it's it's very straightforward to have a very well produced video. It is very difficult to have a valuable video. And I guess another analogy I can draw is how often have you gone to a movie with amazing special effects and just a terrible, stupid fucking story? Yeah. It's like normal now for movies to be very well produced, but kind of shitty, like like a like a really just just a dumb story yeah. or a dumb plot rather. You get a headache from the production because it's almost it's almost overproduced in a way. It's yeah, that better that than reality. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm trying to pull back from that uh, thought process that I that I had uh, maybe a, a month ago, to where I think as I continue to do these things, it's going to be simple, straightforward. I mean, if you think about the way that we tackled the podcast early on, it's just two very long tracks that I edited <laughs> and sometimes you have shitty internet and uh, you know, you have these, these delays that you have to people. There are people out there that edit podcasts. Um, they edit out every single little um and breath. There's no, there's no and, breaks. It's, it's not real. It's just like, yeah, it gives me a panic attack. Yeah. I've never done that. Oh. And I, I cannot, I cannot see myself doing that. I don't know. Maybe AI can take care of that, you know, someday. But still, it it, it does it does come out really unnatural. And for me, the way that I'm going to tackle video is going to be very much the same way. You know, very very straightforward. We'll try to we'll try to keep things looking polished and nice. You know, whenever we can. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a decent camera with you know good picture and all that kind of stuff yeah. when you want to see the watches, but 
Dude, Everything it's... we do has to serve the context of the video. If it's if it's a review on the CWC Sea Falcon, which I loved your video by the way, I thought that was perfect. I think I think you, you totally crushed that shit. Thank you. So the, the the context of the production has to suit the nature of the video. The context of production shouldn't suit our own vanity. The best shots in your video should not be of your own dumb face. Like it has to be of the the watch. And yeah. so I think anything we do production wise, as long as it serves giving people valuable information and articulating a viewpoint about a watch that we're talking about. That's, that's, that's awesome. Like, I'm not going to get all caught up about like lighting in my background. Like I know, I know I make comments sometimes, but that's just because I don't like to look my own dumb face. I'm not going to get like super concerned about like certain things like that. But if you watch one of our reviews and if you leave at the end of it saying like, Hey, that was really thorough. I learned a lot. I'm in a better buying place than I was before I watched this video. If you feel that way after one of our reviews, then the review worked. It's funny you know? when, when you look at your review videos, I think there are, there may be some people in the content creating world that will say he's doing this and this and this and this wrong because it's too long or it's not scripted enough or it's, I uh, say, um, too much. <laughs> yeah. Or the, the, you know, this is not good for, you know, contemporary or modern attention spans on the internet. But if you look at the comments, you know, people, people, people are, are telling you, you know, yeah. I don't shorten these. Don't. Yeah. Cause I made the comment. like, oh, I got to do them shorter. But then a bunch of people were like, no, 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 don't shorten this. These are perfect. I'm like, oh, word. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's really cool. And oh gosh, I wish I deleted I think... them. I, I was going to say I deleted them, but I had so many different takes of that CWC review. <laughs> I don't know how many takes bloopers. you do. We should it, keep. It... It was like a blooper reel that I probably I should it. have made. It was great. Yeah. We should keep all bloopers and just compile them into like an end of your video and be like, here's all the bloopers from our videos or post them at the end of our reviews. Oh my God, that would be amazing. Every yeah. review should get a blooper reel. <laughs> I Do had some cats and shit in mine. I had some funny moments because it, it was, <laughs> it was really the first time I had ever done that. And it was just mm -hmm. like, okay, how... Can I say this? Is that a mess up? I don't know if that's a mess up. I remember with the Yema, I did a review of the Yema Urban Traveler, which was a very fun watch. And uh, I got like 10 minutes into the review and I realized I had a giant thumbprint on the crystal. And I'm like, fucking shit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like on, like I recorded myself saying fucking shit, dude. And I had to stop that video. That'd be a great blooper reel. Yeah, I got, I got, so I think the CWC one is maybe seven-ish minutes or something. Yeah. And I had a really good take. And then my bird clock went off and it was so <laughs> distracting. I love your bird clock. So uh, oh, there's, there's, there's so much, but I, I think I'm happy to take that to, and face it head on. You know, I think Let's we're, do it. we're taking baby steps. This is also, you know, if you're a listener, if you've been with us for a while, if you're just getting into it and you're seeing this chapter of TBWS, you're going to see sometimes, you know, hopefully not that often, but we do have, we do slow down on content production. And mm -hmm. I think, I think a big part of that is the desire to as, as unpolished as we think this may be, we still try to be calculated with, with what we do. Yeah. Um, so that's why, that's why we had a recent slowdown. We're not dead. This is just kind of the stuff that we've been talking Th thank about. Thank you for asking though. We got messages and <laughs> like yeah. emails from people. We're like, you guys okay? You guys yeah. dead? And it, it really does warm my heart that because, you know, we, we were really hitting the site hard in terms of strategy that you put together. Mm -hmm. You know, I was trying to keep up with news things really detailed written reviews and the, the site in itself is just a monster to keep up with, especially mm -hmm. if you want it to, if you want to be relevant and just out there with the rest of the watch content. So that thing is a, that thing is a beast to operate, especially just with, you know, two guys and uh, a couple of friends that help us out. So it's, it's, it's one of those things that's hard. It's hard to juggle, honestly. And, yeah. you know, but I think for the longevity of what we do and so we can reach and help more folks, we can't also just silo ourselves on the website. That's where the YouTube yeah. thing came from. Like that's yeah. like, what's the best medium me me median? No, medium is the thing in the middle of a road. Yeah. Medium. What's medium? 
I'm really, let me tilt my camera up. I'm really putting that master's in literature to good use. There it is right there, <laughs> along with some Disney money. And those are the PlayStation covers for Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VIII. There you go. Have fun with that. Um, really putting that degree to good use there. Uh, it's also a matter of determining what medium is going to be best for how we feel we can help folks or how we feel we can express ourselves and some of our viewpoints on watch collecting and neurology and the industry and everything like that. And I, I, I'm excited for the YouTube thing. Um, a lot of the, the hiatus that we had kind of taken over the past month was just figuring out logistically what it looks like to work that into our normal, like TBWS work routine on top yeah. of having like families and like jobs and shit like that. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah. to your, to your point, we have, well, I, not, not to your, you made this point directly. We have the luxury of being able to take a step back and do that. We don't have a board or um, like a, 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 like a VC we have to like stay on track with and like make sure that we're constantly producing content. Like we're, we're able to take a step back and really look authentically about what we want to do and how we want to do it. So um, I'm stoked, man, you know? <sighs> Yeah, I think um, it's going to be it's going to be another it's going to be another I don't want to say big evolution, but it's just it's just the next chapter. I, I again, yeah. I think back to the the moment where I tried to use a camera to take a watch photo and it's just uncharted territory, uh, a lot of learning as you go. And, you know, it'll, it'll be one of those things that we get. Here's how, here's how I, I always say this to myself if I'm trying to do something and I'm intimidated by a learning curve or having to operate in like a new technology. And I do this in my day job a lot. If I know people stupider than me are doing it, I could probably figure it out. That's a really good point. <laughs> <laughs> I also don't even know. I mean, when was the last time you read a watch review cover to cover? I, I, I scan them. I think most people scan watch reviews, like, like, yeah. like, like, like a written one. Um, yeah. Scanning them. I mean, other than, well, I mean, I read uh, the ones we put up on the site just because that's part of like our like editorial process. But like, as like, as a, as a, as a consumer, you know, I'll go, I'll skim headlines. I might do control M, c control F M M. Cause I want to know how big the watch is or control yeah. F dollar sign. Uh, yeah. or I'll look for like a little info card or something like that. Uh, but with the video, I will listen. I will watch and I will listen to the video. Or if I if they have uh, chapters like bookmarked in the thing, I'll go and I'll look for a specific chapter bookmark that I'm interested in. Yeah, you know what do you do? I mean, honestly, these days I look for videos because mm -hmm. I I am I don't. You're not going to find something all the time that has real world photos. And even if you do, those can be deceptive through editing and things like that. Oh, yeah. But that's why I really like just a video where it's, you know. There's no glamour shots. Like it's yeah, an actual real video. Yeah. And you can get an idea of what the watch looks like in real world use, real world light. You know, yeah. this is this this guy. The, I, I like I like Random Rob a lot. There's another. um there's another channel, Three Hand Hunter. He's uh, he does more cuts and things like that, but it's just really simple. Uh, I don't need J.J. Abrams to be making like, like <laughs> my watch review videos. So. People people compensate for unvaluable information with overproduction. Yeah, like I don't have enough of a. Uh, uh, I don't have enough of a perspective to offer you valuable information, but I will produce them fuck out of some of these pan shots and yeah. some of these glamour shots because that also makes brands happy you know you have yeah. to you have to determine the difference between someone that's actually trying to convey helpful information to you to help you make a purchasing decision versus someone that's trying to make a brand happy um there are brands that don't talk to us anymore i was about to get into that so <laughs> the as we venture into this the finished product that you see is going to be it's probably going to look different from the your usual reel of watch content that you're consuming. And I mm -hmm. think it always has. The podcast has been very different, yeah. uh, you know, throughout its existence. And yeah, we've, <laughs> we've upset some people. 
Um, and, but at the very least you can know that you're watching a video that's not like, I don't know. I, you know, this, this, I'm going to say things about this Forstner that are probably not too flattering. I mean, we did. Yeah. It'll be on video <laughs> too. And I don't know. I, I just, I never want to feel like I have to talk something up in a really nice way uh, to, you know, to make some brand happy. And hopefully, hopefully that can, this, this kind of content can exist as something separate from that cloud of watch yeah. video producers that, you know, are constantly doing this. Yeah. So, so heck yeah, man. Uh, I will say also, this is, this is controversial because it actually did cause not issues, but um, it caused, it, it caused kind of issues. Does anyone else remember the balance cock bugle? Do any sort of old to mid tier OG TBWS footprints? The balance cock bugle was our version of like the onion, like the orological onion. So we had these yeah. fictitious headlines that were created. Um, David Bailey, uh, contributor, contributor extraordinaire, um, uh, contributed a, 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 a huge amount of effort to those early iterations and then some of the later, and also a huge effort to the later iterations. Um, or the balance cog bugle piece as well. And so those were so much fun to write. Those were such a great outlet to just poke fun at watch collecting, the watch community and everything like that. Um, and for the most part, they were great. There were, there were a couple issues. Uh, at some the time, of, some of my favorite issues that we've ever actually <laughs> encountered at, at the time, it wasn't really easy to explain to you know Google the search engine because the search engine is the majority of of of, of the traffic that ends up on the website. It wasn't really easy to explain to Google that these things weren't real. <laughs> so for a little while, Google thought that Mark Zuckerberg bought Rolex. Yep, not true. <laughs> for li- for <laughs> for a little while. Uh, I think, what was it, the missing Buzz Aldrin Speedmaster? I think for a little while, Google thought that was found. Actually, I just I just Googled balance cock. If you just Google balance cock bugle, mm-hmm. one of the top results is from the Omega forums, that thread where people are just like, is this real? The That's, Mark Zuckerberg one or the uh, Buzz Aldrin one? Uh, the Zuckerberg one. So there's an oh. Omega forums thread. And the title is Zuckerberg bought Rolex dot, dot, dot. Is this for real? (laughs) And so. (laughs) This is so fucking good. This is, this is wild. Huge shout out to Damon (laughs) for making, making these things possible. Well, the problem is, so I, so, um, uh, uh, in my day job, I work in, I work in SEO. So I, 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 it's a digital marketing practice where I help websites get found, uh, naturally on, on Google. A lot of this also was happening at a time where I think Google was trying to figure out how to crack down on like fake news. Mm. And so um, I very quickly became cautious, conscious that I, I think Google might start flagging us as fake news. And so, <laughs> yeah. um, man, it got complicated back then. But, oh, man, that's so funny. Yeah. Balance copy Google. Mark Zuckerberg purchases. Can you scroll down? Rolex, I just love it. Just because. Is this it for looked, real? It's so believable. That's the problem. I could see this happening. And it That's takes some time. It takes some time for people to be like, okay, wait. <laughs> is this? <laughs> Dude. But also, isn't that the best outcome for something satirical like this? Where people are yeah. just like, whoa, wait a minute. Did he? Yeah, I think this is the first time. Like, is it a, it is a comical article. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, you have to go this far to say, have somebody be like, okay, it's satire. Ooh. This is hilarious. I don't know if I've ever seen the the one here on the Rolex uh, or the Omega forums. That's so fucking good, dude. Well, we're bringing the balance cog bugle back. I don't care what Heck happens. Yeah. It's too much fun. It's just too much fun, man, to not yeah. do it. So that is definitely something I wanted to share. Like, I'm, 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 I've, I figured out a way to still do that and not hurt any of the other and, and not get flagged as fake news <laughs> by Google. But um, I want to start bringing those back. Cause again, I think it all, it all boils down to what can we do that no one else can. Yeah. I don't think anyone else can bust out these balance cog Google pieces the way um, 
we can over here. I, I, yeah. I, and so I'm, I'm stoked for that. Um, keep an eye out for updates like that on the website as well. And, and, and the newsletter, like I said, if you don't want to have to, if you don't want to go to the website every time we put something up, or if you don't want to just like have to go to two if you just want to see what's new, like you, you jump on the newsletter. We haven't sent any newsletters yet because we're still, that was part of what we, we were doing. When we took the hiatus. We're just kind of figuring out what that operational process um, looks like. It's going to be super simple. It's going to be super straightforward. I'm not going to spam people. It's going to be what, but what do you think, Mike? Once a month? Once every two weeks? I think once a month, probably. Once a month. Yeah, it's yeah. once a month. You're yeah. not going to get blasted once every day like some other watch websites will do. Um, but really, the idea is just a consolidated place where you can see what we put up on the site. And um, I'll also be doing like a little video for each newsletter talking about what the month looked like and everything like that. So yeah. um, that'll only be accessible to folks who, uh, who want to, who want to see it in the, in the newsletter. And, everything like that. and some video stuff. Some and, video the, stuff oh, yeah, and, and the YouTube stuff as well. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just because, because as we continue to push out and try to figure out all these different mediums, mediums to, 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 to just try to help folks, you know, having the newsletter out there is just that source where consolidates everything just, it makes a ton of sense, um, especially if you're like me. I work from home. I have multiple, I have multiple screens in front of me right now. Sometimes I don't want to have to go digging for stuff. Sometimes I just want my digital experiences. It's just as straightforward as possible. Um, so that was where a lot of the newsletter stuff came up. Anyway, if anyone has any questions in the newsletter, definitely let us know what's up. I think a bit of a black hole, not a black hole. I think a bit of a black hole is also the um, Instagram. What the fuck do we do with Instagram? I'm. We talk about live streams offline. You and I are talking about doing live streams again. Yeah, we used to do. I think with a platform like what we're testing out here, I think you can uh, multicast to stuff like Instagram, Facebook Live. Is that what we it's can, called? We can we can blast our nips for super chats. Is that yeah. a thing? Is that what kids say? Did did that sentence make any sense? I don't know about for the kids, but I got it. <laughs> as long as you got, that's all I care about. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the whole thing now is on TikTok. You can send, you can pay to send gifts, which show up as like little emojis in the, in the mm. thing. So you know how you, you have the floating hearts on the Instagram live? Yeah. So you can pay to, I don't know, send you me an ice cream. Yeah, you pay to send these little, these little like micro donations. That's fucking stupid. And you have people sitting in front of the phone for like four hours reacting to like ice cream cone emojis or something. And then they make two grand at the end of it. So are they wearing clothes? Um, a lot of times they're not wearing a lot of clothes. A lot of clothes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if we'll be doing that. So it's a very niche market. Yeah. I don't know if the watch world is ready for that yet. Just two hairy chested, greased up dudes reacting to ice cream emojis. Just another yeah. Saturday morning. I'm trying to think of who I would watch do that kind of content. Maybe Tim Lasso. In the in the, in the in the watch world? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. As long as Tim's still talking, you know, orologically dirty to me, sure. I'll watch yeah. Tim Lasso do that. For sure. He should get on TikTok. <laughs> 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 probably already is but that, I, I think michael and i just wanted to carve out a, a time a, 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 just some time on the episode today just to talk to people about you know what what's been going on where our heads are at because so i think something that i also is i think something that's been highlighted a lot especially with recent events in the watch world and just some of the questions that people are asking about watch journalism and things like that i think there's a level of transparency that a lot of watch podcasts or maybe blogs uh can't do or are unable to do and that's not something that michael and i are restricted by so we just wanted to be as transparent as possible about what's in our heads what we're thinking about what's important to us and really what we're trying to do to um i don't know just just keep having fun i i i every now and then if I get like bogged, if I get bogged down in something and I start having like a panic attack, Mike's just like, Hey man, it's okay. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. We're supposed to have fun. If, if Mike's bogged down, I'll be like, Hey, it's, it's fine, man. We're not the red cross. It's cool. Like, it's just, it's just a podcast. Like it's, it's okay. Like I, I feel like I've had more panic attacks recently. <laughs> I, I, I have my fair share. I just, it's, I, uh, 
I I hide them very well. But no, I, mm-hmm. I, 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 I'm just excited. I'm excited to have the opportunity to keep doing stuff like this. But I think that's everything, man. We uh, I I I was most excited to tell everyone that Balance Cog Bugle was coming back because I really fucking love it. And I really do love that people thought Mark Zuckerberg bought Rolex. That's fantastic to me. Yeah, that's, he that's should. funny. He should, honestly. He's busy building his doomsday bunker in Hawaii now, actually. <laughs> I don't know if he has... Maybe he doesn't isn't, have the is, funds. Isn't his bunker just Hawaii? Isn't all of Hawaii his bunker? Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> Why build a doomsday bunker in Hawaii when Hawaii could be your bunker? Or Alaska? That's how I would think if I were a billionaire. <laughs> but man, that's it. I think is there is there anything else in terms of the 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 time we took off and future stuff coming up that you think is is uh oh, and we'll also be sharing more just editorial and just opinion pieces on the websites not just going to be like reviews and talk about video stuff like i also really want to start make a concerted effort to create really just thoughtful opinion pieces that don't talk about like the workhorse movement of the 8215 i'm dating myself what 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 miyota iteration of me we're, we're on the nine zero movement now we're on the nine yeah we're on the nine series we're on yeah <laughs> the workhorse the workhorse nine one three nine or whatever it is you know what i mean um just stuff that I think people actually get value on. Yeah. And I will say like when it comes to reviews in the future, they'll probably, I, I, I kind of just really dig this format that we landed Mm -hmm. on where, Oh yeah. This is great for the website. It's not going to be like a 5,000 word review on a quartz chronograph. I mean, maybe you might see that every once in a while, but this is, this is what watch reviews will look like on the site and they'll ideally have a, a video component for each one. But this was, yeah. this was fun to put together. Yeah. Paragraph pros and cons, bullet points, specs, and then the video. The idea is just to try to get you the information that's most helpful to you as fast as possible without you, without having to have you dig through, you know, it was the middle of the night as I was packing my bag. And I just recalled yeah. the phone call I had with my father as the storm raged on outside. It was difficult to concentrate, but I realized I needed to find a chronograph. Yeah, you don't have to dig through that shit to figure yeah. out how fucking wide are the lugs. How wide? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and we've had we've had those pieces on the site as well. So. We have had those pieces on the site. You know, that's why it's great. Remember the haiku reviews? I think I, only, I think I only ever did one haiku review for my that was one. Wide, actually. That those was are great. Fun. I should do those as a video. Video haikus. Shit. That'd which water have I been drinking? I have three waters at my desk. A uh, pink one. Oh shit! You're right. You know what's funny? They all have liquid in them, too. <laughs> I do that, too. I forget that I haven't <laughs> gone through one completely, so I'll just open another one. My wife will come to my desk and she'll be like, be like why are there so many cups here? I'm like, I, know, I just forget. I'm just, I leave the room and I forget. Like, I just, I don't know. And then I have to grab oh, another yeah. water. <laughs> I got cups. Cups in cups. Is it like a camping cup? What is that? This is like a mug, and then I have a mason jar inside. Oh. I don't know why. Something was... It's like kind of gross, actually. I can't get the jar out of the mug because it was just sitting here. Okay, there, there it goes. Go. I heard that. There. The satisfying thwack of dislodgement. Nice. Heck yeah, dude. Um, I, I, I'm down. I say we leave it at that. Any thoughts or comments about everything we chatted through? Definitely let us know. Um, hit us up uh, on the email tbws.contact@gmail.com. Um, we cleaned it up. Start- yeah, we did. We're, we're Michael. Michael took on the Herculean task after he did, after he slayed the Nemean beast and cleaned out those terrible stables. He said, "You know what? I'm going to go to the inbox as well." Um, <laughs> and he definitely made a Herculean effort. Uh, and so the inbox is, is is in a spot where we're going to actually see things again. Um, but in addition to that, I don't think you and I talked about this, bro. But what we stopped posting podcast episodes on the website. And just left it to have people get pinged by whatever podcast app or Spotify or whatever they yeah. were, that they were doing. Should we figure out, should we start putting podcast episodes back on the site? But in a way that also helps our, the SEO stuff that I was talking to you about. We can talk about that. Well, another thing that we changed recently, all the audio is going on YouTube as well, which. <clears throat> yes, I'm, that's right. Yeah. 
So audio audio only versions will port into YouTube uh, through RSS, and um, I guess people like people like listening to podcasts on YouTube. Some even if it's audio only, it's just one of those things that. Know. Yeah. So. so so let's do that. If you didn't want to email us, go to YouTube, comment in the video. Yeah. And so we'll do our best to respond to comments as they come in. Again, we're just two cool dudes trying to figure it out. So if it takes us a little bit to respond to your comment, we are we are wonderfully sorry. But um we'd also we'd also been to, been offline for the past couple of weeks and just kind of figuring everything out so we're getting back into it but i would say that you could uh, hit us up on email tb tbws.contact at gmail.com or um go and leave us a comment on the uh uh in the actual youtube video comments um, for these uh, for these recordings but i think that's it man i feel whole again i'm wearing my grand seiko we got to hang out we got to record it's a I sunny day. Way. I'm gonna do some. I'm gonna do some video now. Heck yeah, so. dude! I'm gonna go and uh, I'm gonna mop. Because when my kid eats, he thinks the f- floor is hungry. <laughs> so <laughs> that's probably <laughs> fun. <laughs> cherish, <laughs> cherish those memories. No, I love him. I, I, he's, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's over a year old now, and I, I was saying this to Mike offline, and I. I don't know where the year went and I just get really sad that I'm going to miss too much time with them. And so I just want to, I just want to see them as much as I can. Um, so I'm going to go do that while I mop. I'm going to look at them, not menacingly, lovingly, <laughs> just angrily bopping and just staring at them. <laughs> yeah, I did. I, I had a chance to watch him eat and it was wonderful. <laughs> I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Ah, uh, that's so good. So let's do this, man. Is it that, um, is it that sad time? How do how do we end a recording on this new platform? I guess I guess you have it. You have the you have the button. I have a button here, and I hope the button works. So okay, all right, let's do it. You start. I'll tuck them in. Thanks for listening, guys. My name is Mike, and this is Kaz. You have been listening to Two Broke Watch Knobs. Later. <laughs>